Let's keep this project moving right along. Today, let's install the motors. I want to give a huge thank you to Lead Shine for sponsoring all the AC servo motors and drives for this project again. Um, let's go. Let's install some motors. I've got three big boxes here from Lead Shine, and uh, this one feels the heaviest, so I'm guessing the motors are in here. So let's open it up and take a look. Okay, we should have, let's see, one 750 watt servo and then four 400 watt servos and then with one with a brake for the ZX. All right, this looks like the 750 watt. All right, another 400 watt. And another one. All right, and this is the 400 watt with the brake. Cool, let's get these installed on the machine. Let's see if we can get the 750 watt servo hooked up to the front chuck here. I think I want the wires to come out this side probably. Okay, cool. Let's uh, tighten down the coupler now. All right, that feels pretty good. Let's see if we can turn the front chuck now. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. You can see if I did this right, there should be just enough clearance under the motor for the rear chuck. Let me slide it up here. Yeah, you can go all the way up to here. All right, cool. Let's get the motors on the rear chuck. All right, let's install this Y-axis motor. Go like that. I think my drag chain is gonna go below. So I'm probably gonna want the wires to come up the back, I'm guessing. Let's start with that. If I need to rotate it, I will later. All right, let's try that. Now let's try to install the motor for the rear chuck. Uh, I think I'll have the wires come up this side because they'll both run this way through the drag chain. Okay, cool. Let's get this X-axis motor installed. Okay, one more. Let's do the Z-axis. For the Z-axis motor, we've got some long screws and some spacers. Let's see if we can get this on here. All right, let's tighten this coupler. All right, that feels good. I can't turn the shaft because of the brake on the motor. So that's good. All right, motors are installed. I've got this long drag chain for the rear chuck and the Y-axis motor wires. Um, I've got to figure out what to do. I think I'm gonna just probably laser cut a couple brackets that will attach here and come out, make a little shelf for it. And we'll, we'll bend a couple 90 degrees in it. Um, yeah, let me uh, figure out that design and we'll get this cut out. I've come up with a simple bracket design in Fusion. I'm ready to cut out the support brackets for the drag chain. Got my file all set up. And I've got the material loaded. Uh, it's two millimeter stainless steel. So let's give it a try. I don't know if you can see it. 
kerf width is so small. Um, see how much burr there is in the back. Still a little bit of burr that I'm gonna have to sand off. Um, yeah, I definitely need to go get some more nitrogen so I can dial in these settings better. So a quick side note from the future, uh, the cut parameters were just fine. It turns out I didn't quite have my nitrogen regulator open as far as I thought I did. So it was only getting about half, three quarters of the pressure. Once I realized that everything cuts out just fine. I've got the burr sanded off the back side of these. So let's see if we can get them bent into shape here. All right, that looks good. Let's do the other one. All right, let's get these installed. I've got my two drag chain support brackets. I'm just gonna loosely attach them for now. Um, I need to attach the end of the drag chain up to this beam. Um, then I'll make them level across. I'm just gonna loosely set them in here for now. Let's go right up there. All right, let's get it attached to the front here. We've got some drop-in T-nuts here, so we can attach the drag chain. All right, that feels pretty good. Let's raise these brackets up so it's all level now. I think I'll use a digital level here. Okay, let's do the other one. Okay, so that looks good. Um, I failed to consider how I was gonna mount this on the motor, so let me uh, have a think about that for a second and I'll come up with a bracket so we can mount this somewhere right there. I think this may be a case where simply adding a zip tie might be the best option here. It looks like the drag chain gives us just enough reach. I want to make some covers for the x-axis motor and the idler pulley. Um, I already have the parts designed from the last project, I just need to get them sliced and 3D printed. Alright, motor cover. Let's see if we can get this motor cap installed. It's going to be tight again. I don't know if I can get up in there for the back ones. Get these front ones started maybe. Mm. Can't quite reach it. I'll probably have to cut off one of my hex keys to get up in there for the back ones. I think this one's gonna reach in here now. Oh yeah, nice. Still gonna be a little fiddly, but at least I think it's gonna work. All right, that did the trick. Let's uh, install the idler pulley cover too. All right, I have the idler pulley cover. That looks good. I have 3D printed some 4040 end caps to cover up these sharp corners here on the back. I couldn't sleep last night thinking about that single zip tie attaching the drag chain, so today I've come up with a better clamp. The bottom piece is going to be laser cut, and the top part will be 3D printed, and we'll screw it all together. Right, All right. Here's part of my drag chain mount, the clamp part. Oh, there it is, right there. Okay, here's the part. Uh, it looks nice. I used compressed air this time since I'm out of nitrogen. You can see it has a slightly darker edge because of the compressed air. But uh, yeah, there's basically no burr. Let's get this proper drag chain mount assembled. My laser cut piece is going to screw right into here. Okay. 
feels solid. Okay, I got my two halves of the clamp and some hardware here. Let's see if we can get this attached. This right on the bottom. It's all right, right there. Okay, that feels solid. Now we can get the drag chain bolted to that. All right, that feels nice and secure. All right, nice. I think next video we'll be able to install the laser head and start wrapping up all the loose ends so we can begin all the wiring. Later in the series, I'll do a couple more videos about the lead shine servos. Um, we'll do all the wiring and connecting of the drives, and then I'll do another video about uh, the whole tuning process again. If you're interested in checking out Lead Shine's products, uh, you can visit their website at leadshine.com. If you want a quote, you can email them directly at sales at leadshine.com. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters for making these projects possible. Thank you guys.